Hi folks, how are we doing? Matt Harmsworth here, host of the Ask the R podcast, where today I'd like to talk to you about tree houses. So tree houses, we all love them, right? I know I certainly love mine as a as a as a kid. It it wasn't anything particularly fancy. It was just literally something that uh, my dad and I threw together in the apple tree at the end uh, end of the garden. But the, these days, you can get things that, um, quite frankly, they look like a mansion in the sky, don't they? And it makes me think we had an inquiry, I think probably it was back last summer or the beginning of last summer. And uh, it was it was a bit of a sad one, to be honest. The um, It was the husband's sort of dying wish that a treehouse could be built for his children after his passing at uh, at their grandparents' house down near London. And um, it was probably heart-wrenching stuff, but his wife, bless her, she took the bull by the horns and together with the grandparents, they found a fantastic supplier uh, who would build them exactly what it was that they that they wanted they got all their ducks in a row and, and and kind of got the uh got the got the process moving but as it turned out they didn't actually need planning permission so uh they approached the local authority and yeah it came back that they didn't need planning permission but the trees were protected by um tree preservation orders and i think as i recall it was in a conservation area as well but here's the kicker as you know the local planning authority took I think it was about five months to get back to them, by which time, sadly, the father had passed away. The nights were drawing in. We were heading into uh, into the autumn. And, I mean, eventually, after months and months and months of backwards and forwards, where everybody kind of felt the writing was on the wall, and with some of our help, they got their, uh, they got their consent to, to get this treehouse moving. And... There was a planning condition on there, actually, um, because of oak processionary moth, or OPM, which was a first for me. It's the first time we've come across that as, uh, as, as a planning condition. And basically what it meant was that there had to be some investigation work done and a mitigation strategy put in, uh, put in place. And if you don't know what OPM, or oak processionary moth, is... Essentially, it's the caterpillars that cause the problem. So the, the, the caterpillars or the larvae of oak processionary moth are um, are pests, basically, that live on oak trees um, in the Quercus genus. And they're pretty much, that. well, they are, they're a hazard to human and uh, also to animal health. And OPM, at the moment, is only known to be established in a relatively small area of the country, across kind of London and uh, and the southeast into the southwest. Um, so when I say southeast, southwest, I mean immediately southeast and southwest of London. And it's a tree pest because its caterpillars feed on the leaves of several species of uh, native oak trees. Um, large populations of OPM can actually strip whole oak trees bare, leaving them much more vulnerable to other pests and diseases um, and also other stresses such as uh, such as drought. The older caterpillars, they develop tiny hairs containing an irritating uh, protein and contact with these hairs can cause itching, skin rashes, as well as kind of eye irritation, sore throats and breathing difficulties in, in both people and animals. And this is where the challenge um, the challenge comes along. If you're putting a putting a um, a treehouse anywhere near oak trees in the southeast of England, in the London area, then obviously there is the potential for the children to come into contact with oak uh, oak processionary moth. And I mean, the risk of exposure to these hairs is highest in in May and June in the summer months. The caterpillars can shed the hairs uh, when they're threatened or disturbed. The hairs can be blown by the wind and they kind of accumulate in the caterpillar's nests which can then fall to the ground they stick to trunks and branches and grass and clothing as well as to actually to uh, equipment such as ropes used by um, tree surgeons and equipment used by forestry and ground care workers so can be can be a real real problem and if you can have a wee google online you'll um, the forestry commission actually have put up lots and lots of useful information about this and you'll see some of the photos of the kind of rashes that they can cause so i mean basically do not touch or approach opm nests or caterpillars uh they're really quite obvious once you've had a look at a picture of them i'll pop a link in the description on the podcast um don't let children or animals touch or approach the nests or caterpillars 
don't try removing the nests or caterpillars yourself. They can be removed professionally and um, avoid or minimise time spent under or downwind of any infested oak trees, especially on uh, on windy summer days. So, I mean, essentially... Once we pulled a team together um, and we got an approved contractor in to deal with uh, deal with the risk of OPM, we uh, put this mitigation plan together and we got the uh, got the planning conditions discharged. Um, and then working uh, working with the contractor, we got the um, I think there was one nest there from what I can remember. We got that treated and uh, and and removed, which was good. And the construction company then were able to move in and get this uh, get this tree house built just in time for Christmas. So today's kind of mantra for action is that if you have a seemingly simple project on the horizon, beware the hidden challenges and uh, hack that process by getting your your tree survey work done early so that's me for today tree surveys and oak processionary moth bit of a strange one but i thought that might be uh, might be useful have a wonderful festive break when it comes and i will speak to you in the new year cheers now bye